You are listening to Where is the Line? The stories you will hear will be depraved, disturbing, and true. If you are easily unsettled, you may find this program offensive. And if you are under the age of 18, fuck off. A young man's disappearance unexplained, and now there's a push for new leads in a cold case. That's right, Jim. The face of Branson Perry is now plastered on giant billboards. Seven years ago, he said he was going to put away jumper cables. He hasn't been seen since. Two years after Branson vanished, there appeared to be a break. The FBI arrested Jack Wayne Rogers of Fulton. They found disturbing messages on his computer claiming he had driven to Skidmore and abducted a blonde-haired boy. Everybody drinking blood, everybody eating brains. Some monster party Everybody eating flesh Everybody breaking bones Some monster party Thank you for listening to episode 19 of Where's the Line? My name is Kevin and with me today is my dearest friend and the only person I know with a photograph of her own colon, Samantha. Say something disturbing, Samantha. Chrysler town and country minivan chrysler town and country minivan when you hear the phrase chrysler town and country minivan honk your horn <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that description of you being the only person i know with a photograph of their own colon is something that didn't really appear in an episode but uh has something to do with something that you went through recently <laughs> that's right kevin this october i had a colonoscopy uh, I don't know if our listeners remember, several episodes ago, I was complaining about my five-year bout of nonstop diarrhea <laughs> and how <laughs> <laughs> and how I didn't feel good. Well, that all came to a head. I went to the doctor, and they decided they need to go in and take a look, and they did. And it was a good thing they did, too, because they did find some things that they needed to get out of there that would have probably caused me some difficulties in a couple of years. Did they just offer to give you the photograph or? Yeah, well, it's kind of a, once you have your colonoscopy and you wake up in recovery, that's one of the documents they send you out with is several images of your colon, you know, inside of your colon and your small intestine, <laughs> stuff like that. I'm still debating on whether or not I should put that up on our Patreon page. Yeah, I was trying to, I was trying to get Samantha to let me put... <laughs> The picture of the inside of her butthole on our I Patreon might. page. I might. They should do that as a series of photographs, like one from overhead where it's just like your butt sticking out of the <laughs> gown and then it gets a little closer, a little closer, and then it goes in. I wouldn't be okay with that. <laughs> that feels a little well, beyond no, the Well, not to put on our Patreon page, <laughs> just as a little just as a little keepsake for yourself. It'd be nice if the doctors did that. But um, I'll take a picture of my butt and put it on the Patreon page. With the image of the inside of my colon. <laughs> you will not. <laughs> <laughs> not bare butt anyway. You... I might. I don't know. Maybe. Well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely probably the inside of my colon. Well, all right. I'm not ashamed. Yeah, well, you know what? Speaking of <laughs> things that might go on our Patreon page, I know that I said that I wasn't going to do this for the past two episodes, but I've, I've changed my mind. Mm -hmm. I think that we should mention our new patrons at the beginning of the shows. Yeah, I think any new patrons should be mentioned. It's a big deal. Yeah. So now we have 22 patrons. <laughs> Yay. You know how exciting that is. That is that exciting. Is awesome. It's really swell. So here are our new patrons. At our depraved level, we have Gary Thorne, who actually upped his contribution uh, so he can be looking out for a personalized video greeting from Samantha and myself, along with Sherry Smith who uh, is actually Liz's mother, who joined us for movie night. She certainly did join us for movie night. Uh, I think she was a big hit during our movie <laughs> night for the other viewers. She definitely broke things up a little bit. I'm yeah. not sure that she knew that there were other people. I don't know if she watching. knew that either. But yeah, it didn't she, seem like it. She really seemed to like me, though. Yeah, she invited you over for Christmas. <laughs> she did. Many times. <laughs> Thank you again for that invitation. At our disturbed level, we have Megan Pattis, Cami Payne, and Mick Will. Our troubled patrons are Bailey Gilliland, Jessica Boggs, Marianne Spears, Abigail Rector, Anna He, and a Tuscaloosa native, Anna Henson. Do you know her? I do not. Wow. Well, I feel like everybody I know has had a crush on Anna Henson at one point or another. Oh, 
<laughs> well, no, I, I don't know her. Well, all right. <laughs> hey, I just, I wanted to say one more thing. Okay. I wanted to go back to the colonoscopy thing real quick. Mm -hmm. This is a little PSA. I just want to tell everyone. I was only 37 when I had my colonoscopy. I wasn't planning on having a colonoscopy until I was probably close to 50. If you have diarrhea for more than a few years, your body is trying to tell you something. Don't ignore it. Go get your butt checked. Thank you. That's good advice. <laughs> <laughs> So now that we've covered uh, chronic diarrhea, colonoscopies, and our new patrons, are you ready to get into this episode? Oh, yes. Let's do it. In the 1990s, a man named Jack Wayne Rogers was heavily involved in his local church, and he also took an active interest in the area's chapter of the Boy Scouts. He would take the Boy Scouts on camping trips and help to teach them the ways of the outdoorsman. You can probably already see. <laughs> where this is going. Yeah. Jack Wayne Rogers was into little boys. Around this time in the 90s, he got arrested for possession of child pornography and spent a few months in jail. But when the authorities searched his home to find these pornographic materials, they found something else. It wasn't illegal, but it did point to this man, Jack Wayne Rogers, being more unhinged than just your average run-of-the-mill pervert. What they found was a photograph of Rogers which he had taken himself after he had nailed his own penis to a tube before. So what other interests might a man like this have? That's what we're talking about today. The subjectively grotesque and possibly even murderous hobbies and side hustles of Jack Wayne Rogers. <laughs> oh God. We're going to start this story in Skidmore, Missouri, which is a town that a lot of people may have heard of. Uh, it's a town that became famous because of something that happened in 1981, uh, which was that the town bully got murdered. The police show up. It's widely believed to the point of practically being known that uh, virtually everyone in this town knows exactly what happened to this bully who got murdered, and nobody rolled over on the murderers. Exactly. So that was the that was the big story of this town that kind of kicked things off. Uh, but they have had other really morbid occurrences there since then. Yeah, some some of the people that live in Skidmore truly believe that their town has been cursed ever since that murder in 1981. Yeah, and this and Skidmore was actually a town that uh, I had considered doing uh, a, an episode on. Yeah. Uh, but but this topic came up, and uh, so we decided to just zero in on this one individual with a connection to Skidmore. Yeah, this is a very interesting side story. So a lot of things have happened in Skidmore since this uh, man who was regarded as a bully got murdered. A woman had her baby cut out of her stomach there. That's right. That was um, a huge national story. There's been uh, numerous murders there. But the occurrence that kicks off our story is the disappearance of a young man named... Branson Perry. So Branson Perry, who was 20 years old, goes missing on April 11, 2001. He was hanging out with a friend of his, and he said that thing that you should never say in a horror movie. He said, I'll be right back. That's right. He was just going to walk out to the storage shed to put up some jumper cables. No big deal. And he was never heard from again. Um, his family put up a lot of, a lot of missing person's posters all over town. Uh, the police searched for him. They never came across any leads until about a year later when a break in the disappearance of Branson Perry came from a fairly unlikely place. Yeah. So the FBI was conducting an investigation into a child pornography ring. The Candyman Investigations. The Candyman Investigations, which were named after the group of people who were actually trading pornographic images of children with each other. They called that group Candyman. Yeah. So as part of uh, this, this operation by the FBI, they bust a University of South Alabama medical student named Adam Davidson, and they confiscate his computer. Uh, they find that child pornography that they were looking for, but they also found... In the chat logs, a very interesting conversation that Davidson had been having with someone who goes by the handle Bugger Butt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think if you're going to engage in any kind of criminal activity yeah. uh, where you have to pick a handle online, yes. you should probably pick something that sounds cool just in case you end up in the paper one day. 
I absolutely agree. I thought the same thing. <laughs> Bugger butt. Bugger butt. So Davidson is talking with Bugger Butt, and Bugger Butt starts conveying to Davidson that he had seen this missing persons flyer in his local Walmart, and he starts alluding to Adam Davidson that he knows something about this young man's disappearance. So Bugger Butt, as part of this conversation with Davidson, says that he picked up a young man in Skidmore, Missouri, with blonde hair who was hitchhiking. And he says that he got this young man drunk. He's feeding him alcohol. He's smoking him up. He's getting him high. And he also gave him something that Buggerbutt called phenobarb. And what he's talking about is phenobarbital. Phenobarbital is commonly administered as an anticonvulsant or as a short-term sedative for people who really need to calm the fuck down. Right. And it's something that's really only used in extreme cases uh, where, like I said, you have somebody that just really is unhinged and has to settle down. Or in cases where someone is having uh, a seizure that they cannot get under control. So they'll use uh, phenobarbital to stop that convulsive episode. And phenobarbital is a nervous system depressant. So the way it will act on your body is that it will slow down your brain activity. It will make it harder to think. Mm -hmm. and harder to talk. And more importantly for what Buggerbutt had planned, it has a very extreme effect on your motor functions as well. It makes it very difficult to move. So this person that Davidson's talking to, Buggerbutt, goes on to say that once he had got this man drugged up, he took this person to the Ozarks, which for people who don't live in America is a very beautiful mountain range uh, that runs through the state of Missouri and kind of clips several other states in that area. Once he gets this, this young man, this young blonde man who fits the description of Branson Perry, out to the Ozarks, he builds a campfire. He takes all this young man's clothes off, so he strips him completely nude. He throws the clothes into the campfire, and he ties this young hitchhiker to a tree. And then he starts sexually and physically torturing this person. So in the chat logs between uh, this person, Buggerbutt, and Adam Davidson, he claims to have impaled this hitchhiker uh, with a stake that he inserted into the hitchhiker's rectum. And after that, he slices off this person's penis and testicles. And at this point, Buggerbutt's victim's still alive. And he forces this victim to watch as he eats the genitals that he has just removed from this person. Right. And at this point in the conversation that he's having with Adam Davidson, he derails a little bit and talks about his mindset when he's doing these things. And also that this isn't the first time that he's done this. So Buggerbutt said that he himself in the beginning took a lot of drugs when he would go out and commit these murders. Yeah. Uh, but he said that he stopped doing that because he wanted to feel more like himself. He feels like it's a, it's a more enjoyable experience to torture and murder someone when your mind is clear. Yeah. He also says that the youngest victim that he had done something like this to was 14 and that the oldest victim was in the 40s. He says that one of the methods that he uses to prevent these people that he tortures and murders from getting away is that he will break their arms and legs so that if they somehow do manage to get free from being bound to the tree or whatever he's tied them to, they cannot very quickly get away from him on these broken limbs. Once this person, Buggerbutt, finishes deviating from the story he had started telling, which it's assumed was in reference to Branson Perry, he goes back to what he was doing to Branson Perry. And he says that, that once this young blonde hitchhiker finally died, uh, he goes into how he cleaned up the crime scene. He said that he went through the fire where he had thrown the clothes and got rid of anything that might be identifiable as having belonged to the young man that he had picked up hitchhiking. He then gutted the corpse and threw the entrails into a ditch, and he tossed the remainder of the body into uh, some body of water there in the Ozarks. And he said that he gutted the body so that it wouldn't bloat and float to the surface. And that's some good advice. I'd never thought of that. Really? <laughs> well, I don't often think about 
how to dispose a body in a body of water. But um, yeah, that makes perfect sense to remove the entrails to prevent bloating. Well, yeah, I mean, if you if you don't have access to a barrel that you can fill with cement or something heavy to put the body in and close it up and throw it into the water, if you've just got to get rid of a body and you've got to get it in the water, you have got to cut the abdomen so it doesn't bloat and right. float back up. Yes. And he also had some advice for uh, Adam Davidson about alligators, uh, just generally how, you know, if you can ensure that that body is not going to float by removing abdomen, then it's going to sink where the alligators will find it and take to their lair, and they like to let their flesh rot a little bit. So easy disposal by way of alligators. And and during all of this, all of this body disposal, torture description, Adam Davidson, this medical student from Alabama, is fawning over this story. Yes. Uh, Bugger Butt has become his mentor. Yes. And and this conversation between them is, is like Samantha said, it's a, it's a, a mentor-pupil conversation kind of conversation. Buggerbutt is essentially trying to teach Adam Davidson how to do this himself. Mm-hmm. And Adam Davidson is just saying that he cannot wait to try this. Uh, Buggerbutt's telling him that the first time he tries something like this, that he only needs to torture his victim for a couple of hours. That's right. And not the 18 hours like what Buggerbutt claims to have spent torturing this person that many people assume to be Branson Perry. Yeah. Yeah, Buggerbutt said just a couple of hours of good torture and killing uh, is all you need when you first start out because any longer than that, you're just kind of setting yourself up for complications and getting caught. Like, any number of things could happen. Yeah, the more time that goes by, the more risk you're taking. After the FBI confiscate. Adam Davidson's computer as part of that that child pornography sting, uh, they find this conversation between him and this person, Buggerbutt, and they start inquiring about any missing young blonde men in the Skidmore area because that's what Buggerbutt has said. He said he picked up a young blonde man in Skidmore. And they find information about Branson Perry, who had gone missing shortly before this. And Branson Perry is the only person from Skidmore who fits the description of what Buggerbutt is saying. Right. So they get, the FBI gets a court order to find out the true identity of Bugger Butt. And it turns out to be the subject of our story, Jack Wayne Rogers. That's right. They got, they gave a court order to America Online to, to find that out. Yep. AOL. So once they find out that Jack Wayne Rogers is Bugger Butt, uh, they get a warrant and they search his house at 707 Nichols Street, Fulton, Missouri. I looked up this house on Google Street View. It's actually a really cute house. Have you seen it? I did. It's totally normal and quaint. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, when they search Jack Wayne Rogers' house, they find, as they expected, the child pornography, which... He was trading with uh, Adam Davidson. But when they go inside, they find out that uh, Jack Wayne Rogers is a freak even beyond his obsession with kitty porn. So in their search, when they descended on Jack Wayne Rogers' home, one of the places they searched was his Chrysler Town and Country minivan. And in that, they found handcuffs, sex toys, bondage and torture equipment, collars and limb restraints, gagging devices, leather whips, and a full latex bodysuit that covers you from head to foot with only a very small hole for breathing. And that was just in his Chrysler Town and Country minivan. Yeah, in, a, in his home, they also found a jockstrap cup, uh, like what boxers and fighters will wear. Yeah. And uh, But this jockstrap cup had nails shoved through it, pointing inward. <laughs> God. <laughs> You know, like I said, they found this huge amount of child pornography, and they found images and videos of real people being mutilated, tortured, and murdered. Yes. And they also found in the town and country minivan a turtle claw necklace. And this is extremely interesting to a lot of people who believe that Jack Wayne Rogers killed Branson Perry because Branson Perry was known to wear a necklace just like this. Exactly. His grandmother had given him a turtle claw pendant necklace that he always wore for good luck. And that's not a common accessory. Yeah, so so the evidence against Jack Wayne Rogers is that he's been having conversation online claiming to have picked up a young blonde man fitting Branson Perry's description in Skidmore, Missouri. And the police fine in his town and country minivan... Mm-hmm. 
this turtle claw necklace that seems exactly like the one that Branson Perry wore. Exactly. That just doesn't seem like a coincidence. So clearly Jack Wayne Rogers has a lot of unusual sexual habits. But it's very possible, and you might disagree with me, that all of this stuff that he's saying online to Adam Davidson is just a fantasy. What I kind of feel like has happened is that Jack Wayne Rogers did go into that Walmart. He did see that missing persons flyer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he concocted this fantasy around that missing persons flyer to kind of impress Adam Davidson. Because that turtle claw necklace did not, as it turns out, belong to Branson Perry. And the police did an incredibly thorough search of his house and never found anything to link him to Branson Perry, and they never charged him with that. Exactly. But it is still incredibly suspicious, and Branson Perry's family still still believe that uh, Jack Wayne Rogers had something to had, do with it. Yeah, something to do with it, yeah. But do you think he had anything to do with it? I think given Jack Wayne Rogers' close location to Skidmore and his proclivities that we, you know, we're learning about right now, just... I think it's very likely that he still could have had something to do with it, even though he was never charged and they didn't find hardcore evidence and the turtle claw necklace wasn't Branson's. That's weird. But I think of all the predators that could have taken Branson or whatever happened to Branson, Jack Wayne Rogers seems like a likely candidate to have been involved in his disappearance. He does seem like someone who is likely to have done something like this. But he also seems like someone who was likely to invent a story based on a missing persons poster. Yeah, this is such a strange case. I know. I I fully believe that he could just make up something like that. Yeah. I don't know. We haven't finished talking about all of the peculiar things that they found in Jack Wayne Rogers' possession. Mm -mm. Here's something. Amongst images, they found at least 860 and some say at least 1,000 images of child pornography that included sexually explicit photos of prepubescent children. So, you know, we're talking about little kids. Well, I mean, I didn't hit puberty till I was like 18. So <laughs> <laughs> you could have totally had a, a prepubescent, totally legal Kevin. photograph of me yeah. nude. Okay, yeah. yeah okay. But. 18 year old. <laughs> Scratch what I just said. <laughs> During the search of Jack Wayne Rogers' home and of his office, The police found something that pointed to another one of his pastimes. Uh, They found medical instruments. And these were devices that were used for cauterization, clamping. They found bandages. He had in his possession everything that you might need to perform a castration on someone. And they also found a procedural manual on gender nullification. So along with these uh, medical instruments and this nullification manual, they found some photographs that they could determine were taken by Jack Wayne Rogers himself. Among these, they found several photographs of a nude male and also several photographs of the same nude male missing his penis, scrotum, and testicles. Mm. They found uh, several photographs of severed penises that were laid out on a dinner plate and garnished, (laughs) as though they might have been prepared by some five-star coat and tie French restaurant. (laughs) They found a photograph that Rogers had sent to an online friend of his, uh, and in this photograph... Rogers was standing next to a boiling pot, and as part of this correspondence, Rogers said, quote, You would not taste anything quite as good as boiled testicles. Yes. I'm trying to think of whether or not I, I would say I'm just going to have to take his word on that. I'm going to take his word on it, but you know what that made me think of? Mm-hmm. It made me think that boiled testicles might taste like boiled peanuts, which I adore. I hate boiled peanuts. <laughs> really? They're too mushy. Okay, I like them. <laughs> <laughs> we actually, uh, we interviewed someone recently who told us exactly what cooked testicles taste like, and he did not mention boiled peanuts. I know, you're right. That's just a fantasy of mine. <laughs> uh, they also found some selfies that uh, Jack Wayne Rogers had taken of himself, and in one of these, he has his head tilted slightly back. His mouth is open wide, 
and he is dipping into his open mouth a severed penis with the scrotum and testicles still attached. And it is said that the testicles were lightly brushing his chin in this photograph. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's horrible. Yeah, and these aren't prosthetics. This isn't, no. this isn't CG of any kind. Uh, this, yeah. is, this is real flesh. Yeah, Jack Wayne Rogers actually had photographs of severed genitalia that he enjoyed posing with. Yeah, he had some photos of him um, chewing on testicles. Mm-hmm. And the reason that, that he had these photos of this dismembered genitalia is that Jack Wayne Rogers was performing motel room gender reassignment surgeries and sometimes nullifications for people who could not afford to have these procedures done by a medical professional or by people who just wanted to do this in a hotel room type setting. Yes. As we found out with someone that we talked to recently, sometimes there will be parties in which someone who wants to have their genitals removed will have them removed and them, along with the other participants, will cook and eat the removed genitalia. Yes. Uh, that is apparently more common than uh, I would have ever imagined. Agreed. So here is the deal that, uh, that Jack Wayne Rogers was proposing to people who wanted to have their genitals removed for whatever reason. He would perform this surgery for free in a hotel room. And what he wanted in return was that he would be able to keep what he cut off of you. Yes. Seems fair. So one person who made this agreement with Jack Wayne Rogers was a trans woman named Madison Abercrombie. And Madison met Jack Wayne Rogers and an unidentified man at the Travelodge Hotel in Columbia, Missouri. I... The Travel Lodge. Yeah, the Travel Lodge. I feel like that, you know, I, 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 I genuinely feel bad for this person, Madison, because of what we're about to found, find out happened to her. Yes. But if I'm going to have some kind of medical procedure done, even if it's off the books, not done at a hospital, yeah. as soon as somebody says, I'll meet you at the Travel Lodge. Yeah, alarm bells are going off in my head yeah. that maybe the Travel Lodge <laughs> will not meet my... Sanitary needs. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean... <laughs> For starters. Mm. What grievances do you have with it? Well, <laughs> I, I feel like if, if you know, even if I want to have this done and I'm going to do this... Uh, for no 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 exchange of money, I am just going to give this person the genitals that they remove. I feel like at that point, that person needs to try to impress me. <laughs> they need to tell me. They need to convince me that this is the that you're the person for the job. You're the person that gets to keep this. Yeah. And I I don't think that Travel Lodge really imparts that to me. No. I'd like to hear what Jack Wayne Rogers said to sell Madison on the Travel Lodge. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice Travel Lodge. It's <laughs> it's way nicer than the ones you're used to. This one's got a hot tub and an ice machine. So Madison meets Jack Wayne Rogers and this uh, other unidentified man at the Travelodge Hotel in Columbia, Missouri. And Jack Wayne Rogers had told Madison that, that this operation was going to take four hours tops. Yes. And then you're out of here. So Rogers starts this operation by removing Madison's scrotum and testicles. And that part of the operation went fine. But... Rogers ran into trouble when he tried to remove Madison's penis. And the the testicle and scrotum removal, uh, as far as these things go, is fairly straightforward. Uh, but removing the penis is considerably more complicated. And the reason for that is that you have to reroute the urethra. Yes. So with the scrotum and the testicles, you can cut those off and just sew them up. Carterize, whatever bleeding veins or might be in there or tie them off and just sew that up. But if you do that with the penis, you're no longer able to urinate. Right. So the way they do this, uh, which we recently learned from someone that we interviewed, is that they reroute the urethra. So they will take the urethra, reroute it down maybe to where somewhere along the lines of where the testicles came off, mm -hmm. leave an opening there for that. And then sew up 
the area where the penis was removed. Yeah, okay. But you have to do this. You can't leave it open. You can't sew it shut. Yeah. You have got to do something with that urethral passage before you can... Close the rest of the... Yeah, before you can close that, yeah. that, that opening. So Jack Wayne Rogers apparently had trouble with this part of the procedure. And after about seven hours, he starts suggesting to Madison that she might want to go to the emergency room. <laughs> Which is not what you want to hear no. when you're having a surgery done in the travel lodge. No. And this eventually all comes out in a trial. And Madison, when she talked about it, said, quote, I didn't know his motivation when I went into it. I was under a lot of emotional stress, and it seemed like there was no alternative. So uh, Madison is someone who, obviously, her insurance wasn't going to cover this. Um, she didn't have enough money to go to a medical professional who could perform this operation. So she goes to Jack Wayne Rogers and apparently at the time did not know that her severed genitals would end up in photographs. Correct. Posed with Jack Wayne Rogers. So Madison eventually gets the medical help that she needs and she survives this encounter with Jack Wayne Rogers. But the area where her genitals were, were essentially mutilated. She was disfigured in that area, and she had to go undergo several surgeries to repair the damage that Rogers had done to her. Yeah. So when Jack Wayne Rogers goes to trial, he's going to trial over these child pornography charges initially, and that's when, when all of this information comes out. And his assistant during that surgery of Madison testified during this original trial, and that assistant said that this procedure is something that Jack Wayne Rogers had done several times before. He also said that at least one of Rogers' patients had died during the procedure and that Rogers, when he was getting rid of the body, pulled the teeth from the person who had died while being operated on and threw those teeth out of the car before he disposed of the body so to make the body less identifiable. Mm -hmm. He also said, and this goes back to Branson, Branson Perry, he also said that uh, Jack Wayne Rogers routinely picked up hitchhikers for the purposes of performing sexually gratifying torture yes. on them. So at the end of this child pornography trial, Jack Wayne Rogers gets sentenced to 30 years, which was actually, um, and it was argued by his lawyer, is pretty excessive for child pornography charges. But... With everything else that they found when they busted Rogers, the judge decided to impose this uh, inordinately large sentence on Rogers. And so a little time goes by, and then 2004 is when the hammer really gets brought down on Jack Wayne Rogers. His appeal, because he felt, he and his lawyer felt that, that this 30-year sentence was too great for, mm -hmm. what, for what, that, that, what he was actually being charged with, uh, he has an appeal for that, and it gets denied. And now, in 2004, there's enough evidence that has been collected to charge him with assault and also with practicing medicine without a license for what he did to Madison Abercrombie. Yes. And so for those charges, he gets found guilty, and he gets 17 years for the assault charge and seven for the surgery, but they decide to apply these sentences to run concurrent with his existing 30-year sentence. Mm -hmm. So he's essentially not getting any more time right. for these charges. He's yeah. found guilty, uh, but they're going to run concurrent with the 30 years. So he's still going to be released at the latest in 2034. Jack Wayne Rogers was never charged with Branson Perry's murder. Perry's family still very strongly believes that he was involved but Branson Perry's body has never been found, and there, to date, have been no other substantial leads that have presented themselves. Right. So if you're someone who's looking to have sexual reassignment surgery or to become a nullo even, please don't have this procedure performed by someone like Jack Wayne Rogers. Even if you would like to keep or eat your own removed genitalia, there are actually clinics now that will let you keep those parts. Don't tell them that you intend to eat them, but they will send you home with them. Wow. 
And if you can't afford the surgery, start a GoFundMe or something or look for resources in your area that can help. And if you don't have any better options at all, and if you don't have people to help you find resources, at the very least, just get in touch with us and we will try to help you find someone better than someone who will take you to a travel lodge. That's a guarantee. That's our promise to you. Thank you so much for listening to episode 19 of Where is the Line? If you enjoyed the episode, please subscribe. We can be found on almost everywhere that podcasts are found. I say almost because I recently had our show pulled from a shitty podcasting service called Luminary that had the potential to ruin independent podcasting for everyone. So fuck them for trying to do that and for gathering up the most popular podcasts in the world and putting them behind a paid wall and for thinking that they can include independent podcasts like ours on their horseshit platform without our permission, which is what they did. I'm glad that you fixed that for us. Yeah, so fuck (laughs) them with a big horse dick like the one that killed Kenneth Pinion in episode three. (laughs) I'm glad Luminary is failing, and I really wish that rich people would stop trying to monetize fucking everything. Yeah. They have enough money. Just stop. And, you know, and let the rest of us enjoy a few things that are still free without having to pay for them, like podcasts. This world has so few joys that it really pisses me off when shit like that happens. Yeah. Yeah. So one last time. Fuck you, Luminary. (laughs) Yeah. So anyway, subscribe to us anywhere podcasts are found except for Luminary. On a lighter note, the bad boys of Southern Baptist Humor, otherwise known as the Earth Oddity Podcast, are having a live show here in Tuscaloosa, Alabama on December 13th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. So if you live in the area, you can stop by on your lunch break. They were on episode 13, Where is the Line? And if you listen to that episode, that Southern Baptist part I mentioned might have been a surprise to you. Uh, Believe it or not, though, despite being Baptist, these guys are actually fucking hilarious. I agree. And obviously, they're not your typical judgmental religious people because um, they came on our show and they're very friendly towards us. And they're, fr- yeah, and <laughs> yeah. they're friends with us and yeah. we're friends with them. Exactly. Uh, and they're actually politically closer to the left than you might think. I think that a lot of non religious people like myself have had some bad run ins with churchgoers. Uh, but you know, I think that if more Christians carried themselves like John and Tiny from Earth Oddity do, uh, there would be a lot less divisive in the country along religious lines. I agree. And political lines. Yeah, I got along very well with these two gentlemen. Anyway, they really do make me laugh, and I am consistently amazed that considering what we do here on Where is the Line, that one of my favorite podcasts, and if I'm being honest, it might be my favorite podcast, is from a pair of Southern Baptists who <laughs> quote who can quote Bible verses. Uh, Anyway, their live show is going to be here in Tuscaloosa, like I said, on December 13th. You can find that event on Facebook by searching for Earth Oddity in the events area. The event name is Earth Oddity Off the Floor Show. In other news, a while ago we announced a contest for a cross-stitching of Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th. Thank you to everyone who entered. I made a list. I closed my eyes and pointed. And the winner of the cross stitch is Anahi. Anahi. <laughs> Anahi. Yay! Anahi also, very coincidentally, I promise it's a coincidence, is one of our new patrons. So Anahi, keep an eye on your mailbox for that Jason Voorhees cross stitch along with some stickers. How wonderful. <laughs> Moving on to reviews. This first one comes from WeCC. WeCC says, Love this podcast. Recommended by Rachel from Hollywood Crime Scene. Mm -hmm. I must say you do not disappoint. I love how detailed you get. I can visualize everything as you describe it. 
keep up the good work. Oh, that's lovely. We're sorry about that visualization we see, see considering <laughs> the subject matter of our show. This second review comes from Witchy Chick. Witchy Chick writes, Where is the line? I absolutely love this podcast. Great research, great stories. The host and co-host are hilarious. I have almost finished listening to all episodes and am sad that I'll have to wait for more. Well, you're in luck, Witchy Chick. Because we just recorded another one and you're listening to it right now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we also have a few voicemails from some resplendent persons who called our phone number. This first one comes from Natasha. Now, I have to explain something about this one. We had a faux pas on our last episode. We played a voicemail from Natasha's friend Sarah, both of which are from the land down under, otherwise known as Australia, mm -hmm. in which Sarah complained that her friend Natasha had delivered her whilst on the toilet a burrito lacking of hot sauce. <laughs> this complaint by Sarah was actually in reference to the voicemail that you're about to hear, which I mistakenly believed had been already played on a previous episode. So, Sarah's burrito woes were relayed on our show with absolutely no context. <laughs> so, hey, I thought it sounded good. So I apologize to Sarah for my part in making it sound like you randomly called our show to complain about your burrito. Here now, though, is the voicemail from Natasha, which should have been played before the voicemail outlining Sarah's burrito crisis. Hello, Kevin and Sam. It's Natasha and Sarah. Hey, Sarah, come on, get off the loo. I told you at lunch when I gave you a burrito and stubby, I'm not bringing you one more bloody thing today. Anyway, Sarah can call you back herself. I'm well. I'm enjoying all my merch. Really looking forward to the Halloween issue coming up. And a big cheers to everybody in the Hunchy Bunch gang. Bye from me. This next voicemail comes from a local man. Goes by the name of Danger. This is Brett. Hey, guys. Uh, I'm Brett, but uh, I wanted to tell you a story about a Sunday night I had recently. I went to a wedding reception of a couple of my absolutely best friends. I'm guessing I'm, I am blacked out for an hour somewhere in the middle of that, but I, I wound up with some crazy wound on the leg. Three days, four days later, something was ugly. I don't know if I fell down or if I kicked something or if I stumbled into something, but I've been told that... Uh, I basically broke and killed all of the skin between the bone and the outside of my skin. So there was some necrosis that was supposed to be like just dug the fuck out of my leg. And I spent half of the evening, you know, drinking shots and heavy gravity IPAs, which are local and actually pretty tasty. Uh, but pretty much somebody's been digging in the front of my shin for the entirety of all that's been happening. I've been told that there's going to be a hole in my leg, so maybe I won't look as good in shorts as I used to look, but I'm over 30 now, so I don't think I really care anymore. But it's all good. Like, if I get to keep all my toes, that'd be cool. Anyway, have you ever done a look at, a, like, necrosis cleanup or anything of that nature? Like, I feel like that would make for a really twisted thing. You could just talk to a whole bunch of random folks around or anyone that was interested in sharing a story about having you know like dead full fucking chunks of uh human skin ripped out of their body anyway uh, i don't know maybe it's just something to think about i'm brett brett showed me his leg after after receiving this injury he had been bitten by a spider probably a brown recluse and it looked pretty gnarly and he got drunk and was poking at it with his finger oh well that'll definitely help it <laughs> I hope his leg doesn't rot off. Me too. <laughs> Our next voicemail comes from longtime listener, Tori. Uh, hey, Kevin. Hey, Samantha. It's me, Tori, the um, environmental scientist slash alien abductee. Dylan doesn't know I'm calling, so I thought I'd leave a message and surprise him the next time he's on a road trip. But anyway, I'm just curious. If you were to receive where is the line fan art? or just art in general, what exactly would you be interested in? I'm no art major, but I'd be willing to try. Um, I'd be willing to try something out. Guess that's it for now. Can't wait for the next podcast or, um, or shit show or whatever is next. I love you guys. 
Anyway, bye. Thanks for that voicemail, Tori. We'd love to see any art that you might send to us. I actually, I have a request. I would love to see a drawing of Kevin sucking on a big dill pickle. (laughs) A dill pickle? Yeah. (laughs) I can see it now. Tori, I'd love to see that. Please draw that for me. I was very confident you weren't going to say dill pickle. (laughs) Which reminds me. Did I ever tell you the one time that somebody had come to me with a picture of what looked to be me? It was a, a, a gay porno picture. Yeah? It wasn't me because I did like a reverse image search on it and found the rest of the set. But there was one photo in that set that looked so much like me yeah. that that I told the person, I don't remember doing Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, Tori, (laughs) we'd love to see any art that you might send of us, even if it's not me sucking on a pickle. Yes, Tori, whatever you would like to draw or paint for us would be so appreciated. Yeah, and you know, and that goes for anybody. If someone takes the time to make some kind of art related to our show, there is no way in hell that we will not put it on the website. Mm -hmm. Uh, We might even make a new page on the website. We don't have enough traffic on our site to make much of a difference, but if you sell some art or or something creative, even if it's not related to our show, uh, we'd be glad to link to your store from our site, which again is a essentially worthless gesture on our part, but we'd still be glad to do it. Sure. And I say that because there's so many people that I've seen, you know, since we since we got more into Instagram that are so fucking talented. Mm-hmm. Have you? I mean, the stuff that people are doing is just oh yeah incredible. And I and, and I just see this from browsing their profile. Anyway, I'm I'm always super interested in seeing the creative things that people are doing, especially when they're people who listen to our show and like us. As am I. I think that I think amongst creative people, there's too much jealousy or something. There's there's people, you know, it's, it's people will do like a thing. The people will make a painting and then someone else makes one and they're like, well, I'm way better than that person. Or Yeah, as an artist, I totally know how it is. And um, yeah, I think uh, artists should always lift each other up and everyone should appreciate a good piece of art, even if they're not the ones that did it. And um, yeah, that happens. But I think that happens with like musicians as well. One band gets pissed if another band is getting more popularity you know, local scene I'm talking about. But um, yeah, anyone in this creative field, whether it be podcasting or music or art, we should all just be really cool to each other and support each other's crafts. Yeah, and if we can help you in any way, uh, let us know. We'd love to. I'd, I'd like to. I would love. I know we're not in a good position to do it, but I'd love to be able to build up like just a community of creative people and have a something. <laughs> that didn't make any sense. Fuck you... It. You want to be a cult leader, and you want us all to wear the same color jumpsuit. No. (laughs) I'm kidding. I'd wear a different color, because I'm the leader. (laughs) Not really. I could totally see you as a cult leader. Mm. I have fantasized about that. Finally, we have an anonymous caller. My favorite curse word is Kevin. That's going to do it for this episode of Where is the Line? Our next shit show will be coming out on December 1st, followed on the 13th by our next full-length episode. Thank you all so much for listening. We'll see you again soon. Goodbye. Kids, when you go to bed, stay away from your closets and don't 